Northeast Arkansas News is brought to you by Glenn Sane. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to your Northeast Arkansas Late News. I'm Meredith Mitchell. During these extreme temperatures, there's one group of workers in Jonesboro putting in overtime to keep cool. Those are the Jonesboro firefighters. Temperatures are expected to near 100 degrees this week. Assistant Fire Chief Alan Dunn says that firefighters are most susceptible to heat exhaustion this time of year. The equipment that they wear, including turnouts, bunker gear and self-contained breathing apparatuses, can weigh as much as 60 pounds. Dunn says the department has a rehab van on hand to provide firefighters with a water mist to help cool down during these high temperatures. Large scale emergencies as well. We take into consideration if say we go in and we rescue somebody, then we have the weight of the person that we're rescuing that goes along with that. So it's, it's quite demanding. It's a physically demanding job to begin with. And when we have the heat, it just adds to the stresses of the body. Dunn says that if you see a firefighter taking a break in a front yard while working an emergency this summer, that it's not a sign of laziness, but taking a much needed breather. Now, your first weather. And our heat and humidity are going to continue over the next several days. High temperatures in the upper 90s today, but that heat index value late this afternoon hit 115 degrees here in Jonesboro. That was a feel like temperature late this afternoon. Looks like it's going to feel more like that the next several days as well. Now we are watching the line of showers and thunderstorms up to our north and to our east. A lot of yellows, a lot of reds along that line. That's actually where we're seeing some very gusty winds, some damaging winds as they push through parts of southern, southern Illinois. These are actually doing going basically due south, maybe a little bit off to the east, so it may graze some of our counties. Now Jonesboro and much of northeast Arkansas in the pink here is underneath a severe thunderstorm watch until 1 a.m. as we kind of watch these showers and thunderstorms come through. Any storms that develop will produce some gusty winds and heavy rain, but they are pretty quick movers. They'll move through pretty quickly as we get into the overnight hours. Another hot and humid day in the forecast as we head into our Friday. Here's our current uh, heat index values as of last hour. Yeah, we're still feeling like 105 in Walnut Ridge, feeling like 109 here in Jonesboro, feeling like 102 and down in Newport, still feeling like 111 degrees right now in Corning. For your Friday, more of the same. Temperatures start near 80 around 7 o'clock in the morning. Mostly sunny skies up to 98 for the actual temperature. But once again, that heat index value probably close to 115 degrees. So heat advisory in effect for much of Friday and probably going to be extended into the weekend as well. Not seeing a lot of break from the heat anytime soon. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast coming up in just a few more minutes. Thank you, Chris. If you were driving on Highway 63 north of Bono around 3 o'clock this afternoon, you might have found yourself in traffic. Traffic was stopped on the highway because of a head on collision between a tractor trailer rig and a red Dodge pickup truck. Traffic had to be diverted onto Highway 320. It was too early in the investigation, but state troopers said there was at least one fatality and possibly more. The red pickup was left upside down while rescue workers tried to get the vehicle upright. Needless to say, first responders were drinking plenty of fluids as both personnel and vehicle were overheating. The Highway Patrol opened the northbound lane shortly after 530 this evening. And state troopers were also in Craighead County. Police and other officers made an arrest near Monette after a chase that lasted for more than an hour. Simone Jamison has details from the scene. What started off as a search for what was believed to be a stolen vehicle escalated into a high speed chase in which the suspect was driving at 120 miles per hour, leading police to come here near Cockerbur Creek. I got word that uh, there might have been a possible stolen Mustang coming into Lake City. Lake City Officer Daniels went to meet him and clocked him at doing over 120 mile an hour. Police then chased the suspect heading towards Jonesboro and almost reaching need him before turning back around and they headed all the way across the Lake Sea Bridge and coming into Monette. Monette happened to set up spike strips and got him out there at the curb, Monette curb. And that's when the tar come apart and he could run off the ditch here in Cuckabur Ditch. That's when a chase on foot ensued. Officers used canines to sniff the area and catch the suspect, a white male, wearing a black shirt and blue jeans in the woods near Cucklebur Creek. He climbed up in a bunch of those trees and bushes and hid out. And that's when we called the dog out. We got the dog and several units out here to help us out. We finally caught him about two hours later. 
Officers also used the help of drones to apprehend the suspect, who was taken into the Craighead County Jail, along with a female passenger who was also in the vehicle. The silver Mustang was confirmed to be stolen. The driver of the stolen vehicle faces multiple charges, including reckless driving, endangerment, and leading law enforcement on a high-speed chase. Police say that this case is still being investigated, but says that this is pretty common, especially this time of year. For Northeast Arkansas News, I'm Simone Jameson. Also, a few tense moments at the Pocahontas Municipal Airport this morning. This small Cessna didn't ha had a bumpy landing around 11 o'clock this morning. Local law enforcement isn't talking about the crash, but what we can tell you from the airport manager is that the male pilot made it out of the plane without any injuries. He couldn't give an age of the pilot or any details on the accident. He says the FAA was on the scene as of 2 o'clock this afternoon and until they complete their report. He had no further comments. Well, America's birthday less than a week away, meaning many families are getting ready to light up the sky. As Northeast Arkansas reporter Alexis Padilla tells us how you can be safe with your kids on this 4th of July. Anything that's loud, anything pretty. The, the higher it is and the louder it is, that's what they want. From sparklers to bigger firework bundles, it's all at Blazing Fireworks. This is Scott Bainey's seventh year running the tent. His favorite part about selling is helping bring families together for the holiday. A lot of the businesses, they close down, uh, which allows the families to, to connect. They get to eat, they get to you know visit with each other, and then... Of course, why not blow some stuff up at the end of the night? If you plan on buying fireworks, though, it is important to think about where you are lighting them up. For some cities like Jonesboro, they are against the city ordinance. They're illegal to sell. They're illegal to possess for the purpose of selling. Uh, they're illegal to discharge or explode inside the city limits of Jonesboro. Being caught with fireworks within Jonesboro city limits can result in a Class C misdemeanor and fine. Meanwhile, in Paragold, their police department is making an exception to their ordinance just for the 4th of July. Lieutenant Brad Snyder says they will be allowing fireworks to go off until 10 p.m. on the holiday. If you plan on lighting up the sky Wednesday, it is crucial to use caution, especially with kids. Obviously, we want adult supervision whenever children are involved. Uh, a lot of times it would be preferable if they're very young children to have the adults setting off the fireworks as opposed to the children trying to do it. I know that uh, every year there's thousands of children that pay visits to the emergency room as a result of fireworks going off. For Northeast Arkansas News, I'm Alexis Padilla. Now, if you just want to watch fireworks, Jonesboro will be having shows at Joe Matt Campbell Park and Southside Softball Complex next week. Jonesboro Group Future for Felons is inviting the community to their town hall tomorrow. They will be discussing Arkansas's red tape reduction task force and how it can help get people convicted of a crime back into society after life in jail. Chairman of the task force, Senator John Cooper, will be there to answer any questions. The task force focuses on identifying and eliminating unnecessary barriers for people seeking employment in a licensed trade. That could be anything from, uh, you know, jobs that, uh, that require licensing. And it also could be uh, things like uh, criminal record, in which case uh, people, felons or formerly incarcerated people, uh, of course, uh, their record, criminal record is a barrier. The town hall will be from 6 to 7 tomorrow night at the Parker Park Community Center in Jonesboro. The start of Jonesboro's new blue recycling cart program is less than a week away. They have just announced that they will be extending the deadline to buy a cart for $20 for two more weeks. Originally, the price of carts were going to go up to $50 after June 30th. Sanitation Department Supervisor Cindy Schweizer says that they have sold roughly 6,000 so far. They're hoping the extension of the $20 deal will help them reach their goal of 8,000 carts. We're still a little shy of that number, and so we're really pushing and wanting our 8,000 recyclers. And by purchasing a cart for $20, you own that cart. It's going to last you 20 years versus the lifetime of a bag of one time. Schweitzer says if you haven't received your cart yet, you should have it by Monday at the latest. 
Arkansas Attorney General Leslie Rutledge announced a new division in her office committed to taking down public corruption. Surrounded by several local prosecutors as well as the FBI, Rutledge told the crowd this new division will join the FBI as well as state police in the already established public corruption task force. They'll work with those local prosecutors to punish those accused of violating the public trust. Rutledge said there's been too much corruption in the state of Arkansas over the last year. It's not just our elected state representatives and senators. It's other parts of government where we have seen corruption. Perhaps it's a, a county clerk, an assistant assessor. And we want to do our part on the state level to root out this corruption. The AG's office will be hiring two new investigators to work exclusively on public integrity issues. Millions of travelers are expected to fly over the 4th of July holiday. The TSA says it could screen more than 28 million passengers and crew members between June 28th and July 9th. The wait shouldn't be too bad, though, for pre-check passengers. Over at Memorial Day weekend, TSA pre-check lanes had a wait time of 10 minutes or less. The agency is developing different x-ray machines and screening lanes with hopes of shortening security lines. And Kohl's is kicking off its seasonal and holiday hiring earlier than ever before. The retailer is opening up the application process for back to school, fall and holiday jobs at hundreds of their stores nationwide. The news comes as retailers are competing in a tight labor market. Kohl's hopes to grab top talent before it's too late. The company also says it will offer seasonal workers competitive wages and other benefits. And with unemployment rates so low, more U.S. employers say they can't find the right personnel to fill existing jobs. It's the worst shortage of skilled labor workers in 12 years. Experts say that electricians, welders and mechanics are in demand across all sectors of the economy. Employers are having to bring back retired workers and recruiting part timers to help fill those gaps. Well, still ahead tonight on Northeast Arkansas News. Police in Maryland say they have a suspect in custody after multiple people were shot at a newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. More on this latest mass shooting coming up. And our heat advisory continues right into our Friday. High temperature today was 97 here in Jonesboro, but our heat index late this afternoon reached 115 degrees. Do see some showers and thunderstorms trying to come in overnight tonight. We'll talk more about that severe storm threat in your full forecast straight ahead.